Ow. Man. Three of the favorite things from my childhood were dinosaurs, dragons, and Star Wars. That last one has absolutely nothing to do with this video. Monster Hunter is a game franchise I started playing a few years ago now. I started with the first game, which I played on an emulator. I bought the second game, uh, Monster... Wait, what, what the heck was it called? Monster Hunter 2... Dos. Because two twos in one language was not enough. And this year I decided, you know what? I've been looking at this game for a long time. Because the only reason I played the old Monster Hunter games in the first place was because I wanted to play Monster Hunter World, which I had my eye on since release, but I did not have much of anything to run it on. I was using a pretty, uh, for lack of better words, crappy laptop back then. And uh, now that I actually have a decent computer with good parts in it that can run most games, I figured it was time to give it a go. I enjoyed the other two. I did not finish them. I did not even get past my first large monster in them, but that's okay because I enjoyed what I did play from them and decided once I got into Monster Hunter World, maybe that would be a little bit more up to date because those old games are old. They are so old and so hard. But for those who have never played Monster Hunter before, if you like dragons, dinosaurs, or anything like that, and the idea of a Souls-like hunting game, then Monster Hunter would be a game that you would absolutely enjoy. I've sunk over 60 hours into this game between January and February in the beginning of the year when I, when I bought it. And then about a month ago, after a break between February and... Yeah, it was, it's already June. No, nope, it's September now. Now it's September. Yeah, I, I just didn't play. I, uh, you know, turned 21. That was pretty cool. I decided, you know what? I have a decent job now. I'm going to buy myself something I've been looking at for a very long time, which is a VR headset. So now I have a Quest 3 and I have been playing VR games, which has actually made me play less games overall, uh, including VR. I'm not playing it nearly as much as I thought I would, but that's besides the point. That's a different video. In June, I got back into the game. And, you know, because a bunch of videos were on my YouTube feed and all that. I thought, you know, I'll, I'll hop back in and play a little get bit. And then the next thing I knew, it was a week or two later and I had another 30 hours in this game. Uh, which for me is insane currently. I'm not spending that much time on games. So the fact that I was able to just sink 30 hours in in two weeks out of nowhere. That, that was crazy to me. It took me about 70 hours playing this game to realize I could enter this tent and just get all of my items from the item box and change equipment. <laughs> That's, it took me 70 hours of playing. I was playing this game like it didn't even exist. So I got back into the game like I never even left it in the first place. The moment I picked up the controller, all the controls came back to me. And I was fighting all of the tougher monsters that I was struggling to fight before, which may or may not have been because I was uh, not using traps originally at all. So, uh... Now I've been doing that, and it helps a lot. The main guy that I really like, my favorite monster in the game, in my opinion, is the best, and you cannot change my mind about it, he is amazing, is the Od Odo... Odo Gar... Gar... G you know what? His name's Gary. It's the... It's the Gary. I'm just gonna call him a Gary. Odogaron? Odagaron? Odo... Odo... Garen? Garen? Yep, nope, his name's Garen, not Gary. Garen. Garen just works better. Monster Hunter World has a lot of awesome things in it. There are tons of different weapons that you can choose from, ranging from giant swords to giant axes, to giant axes that turn into giant swords, to musical instruments. And then there's my weapon of choice, the Insect Glaive, which lets me launch myself in the air and perform Beyblade aerial bombardments on anything that moves. The Insect Glaive also, I mean, it's, it's an Insect Glaive, it's, it's got a bug on it, uh, well, on my arm, but the bug you comes with it, I guess, and no, you don't use it as a shield like it looks like you might. You can send it to grab different color essences off of monsters, so there's orange for stamina and white for shield and red for attack, and basically you do almost no damage unless you get the stuff, so it's really a requirement which does up the skill level a little bit, kind of. Uh, I, most of the time you are just kind of in the air and pretty much untouchable bouncing around so yeah that's 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 one of the reasons i like it i like movement games so put me up in the air spinning around hey quick pause uh if you're new to the channel welcome and also please skip to this timestamp on the screen if you don't want to hear channel update stuff okay cool and then for those following i've moved away from vintage story uh yeah i know i 
got a bit burned out with all of the uh, survival crafting games, pretty much. I really struggle to play survival crafting now. And uh, as a general thing, not just Vintage Story. Love Vintage Story, love the concept of it. I just can't play it right now. So at the moment, because I have a whole backlog of games and stuff that I want to play, uh, I'm just kind of enjoying playing games that I want to play at the moment. So this has become a much more variety content kind of a channel. But the whole form I'm going to be taking is basically just updating you on what I played this week. That is that is what the videos are going to be. So yeah, if you're here from the Vintage Story uh, days of the channel, thank you for such a great time. I hope that the future content is something that also is equally entertaining. Uh, it might not be as helpful because a lot of what I did that did really well was tutorials. But, you know, hopefully it's still a, a good vibe. And uh, I'm also streaming on Twitch now. Um, I've moved away from the YouTube one because Twitch is just better. <laughs> I just like it more. Uh, I used to say YouTube was better, but uh, I have since been converted. So I do stream there. I'm wanting to do it Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. That schedule might change. I don't know. And uh, I might not always be able to stream, but I will try to. So best way that you can catch me on stream is just go and follow me on Twitch. I will have a link to that down in the description. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, back to the video. There's also absolutely no magic in this game, by the way. At least not from what I've seen. Everything is very specifically scientific vibe to it. I mean, like the whole story is literally about researching monsters that you then hunt or capture and then research some more and then carve up if you've hunted them. And then if you've captured them, then they go into an arena where you actually do hunt them again, but in a very enclosed space with a whole lot of giant like gun things. And the devs did a really great job at making the whole game feel like a living ecosystem. There are herbivores and docile monsters that mostly leave you alone, except for a couple which get a little aggroed when you get close to them. As well as there's packing monsters, which are the same pretty much everywhere, just with different skins. So, I mean, you know, they, they put their effort where it mattered and where they didn't really need to. I guess they didn't. It's, it's not too bad. It's just like reoccurring wolves. Like if you had white wolves and black wolves, an actual hunting game and gray wolves. I don't know the names of wolves, man. I just know that they come in different colors. But then this is like uh, the same thing, but just with lizards instead. And most of these can fall prey to larger monsters like the Rathalos or the Anjanath or the Great Giros or things like that. This guy is such a glutton. Really sells me that this is an ecosystem I'm hunting in and not just a game with locations that everything kind of sits in. Like the stuff in the game is hunting the stuff in the game, which you might be hunting, which means it might get in the way of your hunt, which makes it such an interesting experience every single time you go out and do something because pretty much no hunt is exactly the same. Earlier, I said Garen is now my favorite monster in the fight in this entire game, pretty much. Uh, but there are still three monsters I am absolutely terrified to fight, like still. Uh, the first being Bazil Gius, who flies over your head and he drops what amounts to exploding proximity mines all around you. I recently found out that technically this Bazil Gius is an Elder Dragon, and Elder Dragons are basically this game's equivalent of boss monsters, so uh, yeah, I don't disagree with that whatsoever. The second monster that terrifies me is Devil Joe, who basically just looks like the child of a cactus and a t-rex and goes all jack jack on you when you start winning a fight with him and just kind of demons up i keep this guy an entire zone away from me at all times if i can because every time i try to do my fancy pole vault tricks he kind of just hip bumps me away which is probably one of the most unfair attacks in the whole game for my weapon of choice but you know you gotta live with something i guess every weapon probably has some monster that it's really not that great against let's see how good i am at fighting puka pukes now <laughs> apparently i can't even hit this thing Vazilgius and devil joe also both roam around the entire map and can be found in any area in the game as far as i can tell which does mean that sometimes you will be minding your own business, hunting a giant iguana or a walking fish, and then these guys will just barge right in in the middle and start trying to eat what you were hunting. Oh, like, frickin' Bazilgius. Go away, it's mine. My bruh. Yeah, Puka Puka is flying away, and now Bazilgius is coming after me. <laughs> 
which is a very cool mechanic, don't get me wrong. The fact that this game's ecosystem works that way is absolutely amazing, but sometimes these guys get in the way in just the most inopportune moments possible. I currently have two more Elder Dragons on the quest board to go hunt. The one comes from the Rotten Vale, which is a graveyard for Elder Dragons, essentially. Well, literally, the game calls it a graveyard for Elder Dragons. I just finished finding all of the tracks, so I haven't attempted to hunt this guy yet. The other one, which is the one I said I would mention later, is Kashala Deora. The worst time I have had in this game, and according to Reddit, the best place to get help for these kinds of things. I'm not the only one who thinks that this is. I mean, Kashala Deora creates tornadoes around you, which is fine, and flies almost constantly, which is less fine. But the worst part is that when Kashala Deora is on the ground, Often it has this protective wind force field around it that just knocks you over if you get too close. And the last time I fought this thing, I spent most of my time just trying to avoid attacks and trying to get it back on the ground, which you only have 50 minutes to complete the quests. And if you run out of time, you fail and have to start again, which is exactly what happened to me. I get Kashala to the point where it's limping off, which means it's almost dead. And then it flies up to its roost in the tippy tip top tippity top of the mountain which takes like five minutes to climb, but I only have three minutes left of the quest. But even with the frustration of that specific boss fight, all of the rest of this game is absolutely amazing. And even the grinding, which I've spent the last 20 hours doing just to get to the point where I might do a little bit more damage to Kshala, I thoroughly enjoyed and it doesn't feel like grinding. It feels like I'm just having a good time and every single hunt is amazing. It's like, imagine you go to do a boss fight, but you skip everything before the boss fight and go straight to the boss fight. That's what this game is. You're grinding the boss is just at the boss. It's not grinding to get to the boss, which is great. And this game is probably the only RPG that I've played for such a long time. And probably one of the few that I've actually ever enjoyed playing. Hey, look, they added Habby to the game. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'll probably end up trying other weapons and I mean, I'm already thinking of other playthroughs at this point. But we'll see, maybe I'll just keep the one character. I don't know. That said, thank you, whoever you are, for watching me rant about this game that I really like. Hope it was entertaining, or at least a nice little bit of background noise while you did some other activity. I sincerely hope you have a great day further. Okay, bye! I did it! Hey, <laughs> yo! Oh, finally. That took so long. Well, guess I have to remove that from the video now. Okay, right, so it's been a little while, like a month, <laughs> since I uh, recorded the last bit of this, which is why my guy has this cool new, like, mask thing with the lantern inside. That is from the, uh, uh, what's it, the Elder Dragon from the Rotten Vale I was telling you guys about. And now I'm on what I believe is the, the final dragon in the base game before I start with Iceborne. So, yeah, I've, uh, I've, <laughs> I've done a bit since then. I've also beat Kashala Deora, uh, which was such a relief, never doing that again. And yeah, that is, uh, that's where it's been. I almost beat Bazilgius now, you'll probably see footage of that, and then... Uh, Devil Joe, I'm still not even close to, to beating. I'm not even going to try at this point. So, yeah. Uh, that's just a little update as to, to where I am, because things have changed a bit, you know?